Welcome, welcome on back everyone to Total War Warhammer 3 and part 2 of our legendary Mother of Stonkia Mortal Empires campaign. In today's episode, things are going to look a little bit different as uh, when we loaded up the legendary save, it was right after Astonkia claimed the Moon Shard here. I had Kevin, who we have rena renamed now Kevin Evkin, because as you all pointed out in the comments, uh, Evkin is all, the, uh, all of the same letters, just re uh, organized around a bit, and I like that quite a bit, so we are going to Rosina. keep him at, named as is. We, what we did is I brought him over to try to grab the Go Trek and Felix event, and that event didn't pop up at all, so I just wrote that off as a loss, because apparently the bug hammer is going to be hitting every single one of our campaigns so far, but this one was going to be one that we could handle no problem. Uh, but as soon as I did go ahead and end the turn here at the Bleak Hold Fortress, uh, then the Go Trek and Felix Shana. recruitment event popped on up, so here they are. I've also gone ahead and dropped the graphic setting back um, to high on a lot of what we've got here, except for a unit size, obviously staying on ultra, a unit detail on ultra, uh, but everything else couldn't go ahead and drop back to give you all a, hopefully a little bit more of a fluid viewing experience as I've been trying to push this, uh, this computer to its absolute max for a little bit far too long. So try to stop the weird uh, frame rate issues. We're going to try that. So to start off this episode let's go ahead and do some upgrades here at the moon shard uh, up to the stanitsa looks good this is going to be our next bastion against uh the coming war of marathi and her flaneshi corrupted dark elves we shall also take mother astonka out to this mysterious island she has the same kind of onion bulb towers oh this isn't a battle site how sad the site is home to an ancient shrine to a lost god. The place is bathed in power, and as your followers approach, angry runes upon the shrine illuminate. Their glow a beacon to the wary. Choose, it booms a uh, deep, this disembodied voice. Uh, we are going to choose Farsight. Uh, the Shroud of War will furl back in your enemies, or your armies, shall cross over the lands and seas quicker. We've got now a Griffin banner, which is going to give a assigned unit enemies around them in a 35 meter radius will have four less leadership that sounds fantastic and the trunk of maps so magical items will be dropping more often and we can see a bit further on the map not bad i was gonna hope we could uh, catch up to noctilus and do some damage but doesn't look to be the case he a war with currently fighting tor and rock we could get involved with that i just think we wouldn't we wouldn't be all that useful there so what we're going to do with Astonkia is bring her up. I'd like to defend Arnheim, but I think we can Get the go for, for a turn me. without defending it. At your of course, we'll find out the hard way if we can. I've got our a commandment selected onto relief columns this time. I was going to try to allow the rebellion to kick off, uh, but with recruiting Gotrek and Felix, <laughs> we're not going to have a rebellion at all, so I will start, start building up control then being able to have go trick and his buddy come on down in march stance he'll bring in some more cosars for now since we have lost our spider building we'll get the akshina one and pass off all these cosars to either go trick or kevin very very soon all right i was hoping for a fight with the undead there that we could gain an additional trinket so that is not going to be the way, so we'll just grab this person totem and the cold one's fang. Bind those up. Orson's wounded spirit he making them. In the we don't have any kind of corruption here, so we don't have to worry about, or at least we can't use the purification chant. What we want to do is get over to one of these settlements pretty quickly, wipe out all of the Slaneshi corruption, and also speed us along towards our next Coven's Curse Mark, which we need to spend 50 more spirit essence before we're allowed to use we're on our way. As for our next technology, well, we could use some more spirit essence this way. Bonus the infantry for those cave bats and 20 armor for forest animals and things in the woods. More extra magical item drop chance and line of sight. That is fantastic. What I think we want though is this convalescence. There's not any more growth and replenishment that we can grab in these early tiers. Spirit of Prog. You have to claim Prog anymore for these? 
I know that you used to have to own Prague, Erengrad, and Islev for these to continue. Uh, but actually, that's never that's never been the case for me. I just have to continue these. So I, I know I, it's always been the case that it's said that you have to own the cities, but I've I've never seen that personally. Prague seems to be the best outward for battle there, forward save against anything that spreads corruption. We'll come back through to this. Let's go for convalescence first, though, for that small bump to growth and replenish rate. We will bring new troubles into the world. Exactly. We're also going to start declaring war on some of these other factions very, very strategically. Starting to try to be friends with all of the the order forces here on Ulthwan. Not yet, though. We want to we want to wait and bide our time. You have my attention momentarily. What would you like to discuss, Sir Thara? He wants a non-aggression pact for 180 gold. That's going to put us at odds with Illyrian and Noctilus. Doesn't look like she's willing to give the Daughters of the Forest any more golds. So we'll just take this 180. Small bag of cash. It'll pay for more grandma's trinkets. We've got an ambusher discovered. Garaz and Deathmaker. Hello. And Blight Tribe has arrived. We've got a foreign trespasser in High Green. That's very brave of you. Mother of the Dark Convent. Mother of the Are you running away from the sisters? Looks like there are Skaven here. She may just be trying to expand down south here. Sheer audacity. That means we'll let Astankia hold her own. Go trick and Felix. Okay. Your job is going to be defending Kevin up here in the north. Let's go into March Dance right next to the Bleak Hold. Very unlikely she stays here next turn. Respect my position. And old deals will grab you. Three Kislevite warriors. Can we afford three Kislevite warriors? No, we cannot. Before I do that, then. Our loyalty goes unrewarded. We just upgrade everything across the board here. It's giving us an additional 10 growth per Stanitza, so I think actually yes, this will this will boost us along in the long run. And we are gonna switch back over then to purge the steps to kind of boost up our control further. Now, like I said, I was I was really only using relief columns to uh, give us some troops early on and uh because I wanted a rebellion. Which we're not gonna get. I'm not going to worry about telling her to bugger off. She'll leave. What do you seek from the Asur, Traveler? I'd like to try to convince Noctilus that we are a juicy target. We have a much less strength rating than him. We can have a Stankia hideout over here in ambush. Why not ask old dead Urson? Old dead Urson? He's alive now. We rescued him. Wolf hearts are very expensive. Yes, what we'll do is we'll go into ambush. If I do not wish to be seen, I shan't. Problem is, can he reach Arnheim? Might be a uh, milk. gamble I'm willing to try to take here. Call me witch. Rosanna, Old Fortress Rosanna. has one more turn before we've got the palisade. And, uh... Our garrison is very, very piddly. CA is uh, allergic to giving us powerful garrisons. We'll go for one more incantation here, and I think even if Noctilus attacks Arnheim, we can likely hold him back. His troops are going to have no armor whatsoever, and we're at least going to have the walls. So, yeah, let's go ahead and talk to our simple creature. Uh, Sir Thora here. State your business. Simple creature! You better relax. We'll join your war with the Dreadfleet. And you give us money? Question mark. This is also going to make us friends with Kalidor and Avalorn, so I think this is a good call overall, especially if Noctilus turns around and comes after us. Gladly. Hey, this agreement is wise. I'm pleasantly surprised. Me too. Lord. Sildurator is currently being annihilated, so it's probably not a good idea to make any kind of deals with them. You may approach. Because we are absolutely going to have to deal with Marathi very soon. 
My plan was, though, to get the defeat trade on Noctilus as he turns around. It looked like he could reach us, which is a little bit scary. I'm here for it. Let's go ahead and end the turn. We're not going to grab the Wolf Hearts just in case he does take Arnheim and I'm not able to defend it. Because uh, then we're likely going to go into bank, or at least the negative, and I'd, I'd prefer to keep our treasury at least a little bit intact. Cap in there. Let me skip on through and in the turn, make sure there's no more Witch's Hut goodies to get to. Right, we're all good. Uh, we did have the Cauldron of Power quest battle kick on up, though, which just allows us to, uh, we need to occupy, loot, raise, or attack three different settlements. I bet there's some uh, flavor text here for me to read for y'all. Oh yes, the Cauldron of Power withers and wanes. Its arcane energy almost drained from constant use in Kislev's defense. Oh, we need to recharge the batteries. Many materials will be required to resurrect the Cauldron's magic. Fortunately, these materials can be found in abundance within the realms of the Motherland's enemies. Ooh. Blood, bones, and skulls. Mother Stankia is basically just corn. Mother Stankia will get you, they say. It's true only for those. The music just cut out randomly. That's concerning. Uh, so Garaz, Deathmaker is going to be a pain and raid in our lands. So, I'm going to be honest. You know that Gotrek and Felix can probably handle you, right? We're heard. Yeah, none of your guys have much leadership. Gotrek is a scary, scary fella. Sildur Tor is gone, which means we are on a time scale to take down Marathi. All right, well, maybe getting into war with Noctilus was a bad call. He's just going to go up the, the creek and run for his life. We a rebellion here at the Bleak Coast. Oh, now they're going to rebel. Well, that actually works out, so we can stay here next to Arnheim. Let us not get knocked them down. Why are we down so far in terms of income? Is it like the just the oh these guys are raiding us? Duh. Yes, All right, go trick. It is simple. You, Guardian Felix, and Kevin are gonna deal with the Beastmen horde. Follow me into the wild. Into the wild. Troll Slayer. Before we do though, who are you guys at war with? Clan Gritus. We're probably not gonna be making deals with the rats. I can't. I can't lie. Kislev's defense is my solemn duty. Is it? Gotrek and Felix will help you. You watching, Felix? You watching, Felix? Oh, it's another Cheeto boy. And very brave of you to throw down with Gotrek and decisive victory. You poor, poor goats. I'm also going to go ahead because it's uh, funny and drop the whiff of madness on Garaz there, who is going to have less leadership, less charge bonus. He should dirt it around in a circle until Gotrek arrives to chop his head off. Rating stance twos, they're gonna be a bit winded. Oh, and we have a choke point. It just keeps stacking up in our favor. All right, let's see if we can't ruin this battle here. To the field. And it's time to eliminate the Cheeto covered gore. Look at them cheer. They don't know what comes for them. We have waited a little bit here for reinforcements to arrive. So I've got Gotrek and Felix leading the charge, of course. They are at the tip of the spear. Absolutely impossible. Well, they, they can be felled, but it is very, very difficult for them to lose in a fight. Once they start getting low on health, uh, Gotrek will heal. Felix is the one that is usually likely to uh, turn and run pretty pretty quickly if he has it gets surrounded. He doesn't have a ton of leadership. Uh, Gotrex is unbreakable, though, and will fight to the bitter end, as a proper slayer should. Reinforcements coming in from the city itself. We are trying to move them up into a position where we can kind of funnel the gore into our pistols. I've got two going underneath still. I'm not sure if I'm aware that they're that direction just yet. But we've also got Evan moving with his forces through the northern part of the map. Their job is to be taking down the hounds. I couldn't quite see that there were these two other units in the woods yet. I didn't realize they had, I guess, deployed in just a straight line all the way across. So, we are moving across to try to deal with some of those individual units. Their lord is rampaging out, he's just running around in circles like a proper angry... proper angry beast lord. They just think he's been overtaken by corn a little bit more than normal. And look at them, they're a little bit more peachy colored. I bet they're corny inspired gore. Now that he is locked eyes with... Gotrek, like a Pokemon trainer, it's time to fight. 
He's bringing two axes. You'd think he'd have a little bit of a dis or a, a advantage, uh, but he absolutely doesn't. We've got Gotrex Doom, Helping Hand, coming down from Felix. He's got all of the stats right now. Up to 120 attack, 90 defense. He is bullying this Beast Lord. And now that Felix is here, the Beast Lord should turn and run rather quickly. Got the rest of the Gore moving on in, so the Dervishes are feeding across the field. I was going to use them to help run off these beasts real quickly, because, like, again, I didn't realize there were more units in the woods just yet. Our lines are starting to form up. The ones that were down below have now gotten into a better position. As Grotrek and Felix absolutely pull the line by themselves. The Dusty Hounds get into position. Still unaware if they want to charge or not. They're quite tired. They need a quick rest before uh, giving battle another go. Gotrek and Felix, though, completely surrounded by these rather diminutive beast critters. Absolute uber chads. They are going to have tons of kills as a duo before this battle's up. Looks like the rest of the beasts have uh, noticed, and actually my dervishes that were rushing through the woods here have noticed that they have enemies and they are going to panic and run away as fast as possible. That's a pretty decent first volley on this group of hounds though, so as soon as they do break away we will send those dervishes through. Uh, but they won't survive an arrow fire, any of the rusty arrow fire from those Encore Raiders. Main army is still a little bit slow to move up. They kind of thought they'd be able to fire where they're at. And now that we are moving up, we can actually get some pistol shot into Beast Man. Now, uh, Gotrek and Felix are absolutely holding the line. Up to 75 kills for Gotrek and 40 for Felix. Some pistol fire starting to drop some beasts. Everyone's allergic to lead. Up in the north, we've got the dervishes rushing around. We're just trying to get rid of these Chaos Warhounds. They get into a flank of our dervishes, or a flank of our normal Kossars. That'll be a good night for several brave sons of Kislev. Evan is rushing in to try to keep these Ungor raiders disrupted and stop them from firing at anyone. Missiles and arrows are starting to take effect now. Several of the gore are losing their will to fight. Here's a pistol fire starting to crack across the field. Oh, and Armored Kossar fights the dust a couple of them. They're completely surrounded, but they will hold the line. As brave sons of Kislev will be such such orange chaos hounds. Other coded for the Dark Gods. Alexander is holding like a champion. They're definitely losing some men, though. Same thing with their other armored Kossars. They are having to use that armor to tank all of the gore. Working out just fine. Putting up those pistols. I haven't got time to reload. Time to ask some questions. And since they are in more of a square formation, the gore clumped up on them, an arrow fire should be extra effective. Meanwhile, uh, the Kevin and Kossar crew are dealing with the hounds and gore, respectively. Almost point blank arrow fire, that would have some impact for sure. Our Lord actually being able to resupply our units is going to be fantastic for uh, either our uh, Armored Kossars, Streltsy, any of the high-value missile troops we have. Oof. Excellent aim, brothers. Most of the gore are turning to flee. We're seeing the white flag start to go up, and they are shattered. Now all that remains is to round up as many of these uh, Cheeto Dust Covered lads as we can before they escape. Okay, we're just getting those cavalry blades wet. I don't know how you managed to do that. That is quite the arm on you there, Nikolai. 
And never any doubt, 100 kills for Felix, 141 for Gotrek and all of the armored Kossars and the unarmored boys, scoring a fair few goat slays. Uh, Kevin and his boys didn't do a whole bunch, but they did keep the Chaos Warhounds off of the main body, which is exactly what we needed. But we go for Solyak provides, but there's really no reason. Let's go ahead and take the part in this time for the extra gold. And we've got to hunt them down once more. We've got a Blessed Helm of the Oblast. This treasured family heirloom has had many owners and at some point was imbued with the power of the Oblast to protect its bearer regiment from harm. So Kevin is going to automatically equip that and it's going to give him an activated ability to give everyone a 35 meter range, 60 armor, and 50% more missile resistance for, looks like, 30 seconds. Seems pretty solid to me. We've got a new trinket because we slayed some beasts. And that's going to be... The Gorehorn. These creatures of chaos are saturated with dark magic, whether they are able to harness it or not. This will unlock us a couple new curses here. We've got the Hushed Cast, which will drop a power recharge by up to 40% as nearby allies cast spells. So I guess when the, when the enemy army starts casting spells, they lose power recharge and missile resistance. That seems pretty decent. And then the Spirited Away... Blessing, which whenever our unit loses below 20% hit points, they take a whole bunch of damage and summon in an elemental bear. That's not bad for bats. You could just get a whole bunch of super uh, rocket launcher bats, send them into the back line, and then all of a sudden there's now a bear. Let's go ahead and grab the another whiff of madness, though. Seems to be the best overall. That charge bonus drop, and then the ability to apply Rampage to any of our enemy's missile troops is far too powerful. Fools, leading you into battle against me. You know We need better. one more trinket. Listen to your heart. We'll be able to start uh, popping Good out multiple shit. of those blessings and curses every turn here. Yeah, then gain some skills. We can make him really good at shouting. I think we'll just quickly grab... A route marcher and then start moving down. We'll grab all of the firing drills and start moving down his blue line. Got some fantastic yellow line skills. Uh, but let's make sure we've got quartermaster and renowned and feared before we go anywhere else. A symbol of my power. Make sure he has equipped the item there. Yeah, everyone's everyone's all equipped up, no problems. Griffin banner with Stonkia, as intended. Just gonna stand here and build up in it. Yeah, she's definitely planning an invasion of some sort. My heart is filled with Currently wins. fighting the Herald, so Nestra and Arahan have their hands full. Armor is for maidens. Alright, go trick. We'll have you move up then and finish off Goraz. We'll let you be the reinforcements this time. We'll have Kevin lead the charge. Hey, you read this axe, right? Good old Cheeto boy. No reason for any curses here. We can just give this one to the auto resolve. That is crazy. Five units. We lose a few. That's just fine. We'll get you a little bit more gold. We're not gaining enough spirit essence to really matter there on the executing them. Commander of the soldiery. Evan, you just go ahead and turn back around and march back to the Bleak Hold Fortress. Oak Slayer. And Ghost Rick and Felix just kind of hang out nearby. Off we go. I dare you to try something, Hagrid. In fact, leave. We'll be declaring war on her at My some God. point. The offspring of chaos disappears. The offspring of chaos disappears. What I do for his level. I will grab not leader of renown. But probably the iron disciplinarian just to kind of fix up control here. The higher control is, the more blood. growth we have. And we are sitting at a pretty bad amount of growth currently. We'll switch back over to Purge the Steps there. The only unit we need left in Astonkia's army is going to be... Kind of funny, though. We're not, we're not going to have a rebellion now. Here, here's what we'll do. Cause we, I do want the rebellion to kick off. Don't change it. Evan, you come out of the bleak hold. I lead, in a bad spot, but that'll be all right. You stay up front to keep them protected. Oh, it's still positive one. We stopped them from raiding, didn't we? All right, so be it. Purge the steps, have Kevin Defender jump back to the cold. And then for Mama Stanky, 
looks like Noctilus is just not going to bother with us. So should we declare war on... Speak quickly. Marathi and try to draw her over towards us? She's strength rank 27, so she's double the power of us, if this is to be believed. But none of her armies have a artillery chariot. So they're Peerless. already at a pretty extreme disadvantage. I'm waiting. No, count Noctilus All right, so be it. Noctilus ran, which was something I wasn't expecting. Especially in, Mar in uh, ambush stance here with a very, very juicy Arnheim to attack. All right, well, let's go ahead then. I guess there's no reason to be in ambush. I doubt he's coming back. He's going to go after a, a much easier target. So what we're going to do then is pull up into the moon shard. Boost up control as much as we can for a turn here. How much magic do you have? You are still increasing, which is perfect. Magic is not the only way. Magic is not the only way. We've also got the bale hounds. The bale wolves. Well, we've got lots of gold. Not a lot to do with it. We need to get into a war with uh, Marathi rather soon. Alright then. That looks to be all we can get up to for Z-Stone. Even though we could probably declare war on Hagreen here and lure her in. You know what? Let's do that. You dare to seek me. Yeah, so unfortunately for you, you're going to find yourself superior to me. We're gonna go ahead and declare war. Bring it on. Think again. Your people will feed the crows of Cain. Now that I highly doubt. Champion of Kislev. What is this foolish? You got some dark dark riders, but these guys are not that scary when we have archers. They've got no armor at all. Business. That is another war and a turn. Oh, did she fall for our ambush? She did indeed, and so we're going to go ahead and drop down the Whiff of Madness on Hag Green, because we don't need you casting any spells. What do you have? Nothing all that scary. They've got one Black Heart Corsair, and everything else is just Dark Riders. So we do need to... I mean, we're going to send Godric and Felix right in, uh, but we'll need to try to blanket everyone else in Arrow Fire to uh, win the day here. I think we've got it, no problem. We could also just give it the auto resolve and lose a unit of our Cossars. Really, Kevin's Cossars survive, huh? Ambush against the Dark Elves. Alrighty. I'm gonna pull up the map real fast. We will dive right on in. Beautiful scenic hillscape, and I shall do my best not to spoil, but we will see if the sinks are able to uh, handle these next couple battles. Uh, just for transparency, I do uh, record the full episode first, then come back uh, afterwards for these cinematic ones to do the battle replays. So uh, there's a couple battles that are coming up that uh, we'll see if the sink can handle. We're going to send Gotrek and Felix directly on in, uh, because it looks like they immediately reacted to their presence. So we've got some fairly dangerous forces coming across after Gotrek and Felix, so we're going to try to wiggle around a bit. Doesn't look like we're actually going to be able to get into contact with the Supreme Force Wrestlers. We're going to charge in, activate Helping Hand, and all of their damage and survivability buffs, and just kind of await our reinforcements. We've got a minute ten before anyone shows up, so it's up to Gotrek and Felix to hold the line. I think there's been several kind of ninja buffs to the AI's combat potential. They are quite a bit more often uh, splitting up their missile forces and having them kind of focus fire individual lords. While all spreading out, we'll have one unit here. I'll kind of triangulate fire, which is quite cool to see. I still make lots of goofy decisions that you can easily exploit, but in other areas, they seem to be quite a bit smarter. Which are getting stabbed all over, he didn't care. Makes him angrier. As they do their spinny thing, and the... So Gotrek and Felix 
in lore being kind of, well, Gotrek himself being a slayer, that this is counted as both the best and worst slayer of all because he is so good at taking down monsters, but slayer's job is to die in combat, which as of yet he is unable to do. Uh, they, they represent this in Total War Live when Gotrek or Felix fall. They actually will come back and just go out as wounded, and they will kind of level up a bit, gaining some new traits that will actually go up in slider as they fall in combat. They're kind of incentivized to throw them into a fight so that they can't win. Right, pull on out, Gotrek and Felix are sitting at... 41 kills for Gotrek, 23 for Felix, and the enemy lord is already running for the hills. I don't want them to take her out, because otherwise they will replace this lord with one that is full health. Got a little bit over the top of our, our audio here, so let me dial them back so you can hear me. That sounds a little bit better. We still want to hear the fight. We just don't want to be completely drowned out. Beautiful. So our reinforcements are now coming across the field, but as you can see, most of the Druki have disappeared. Uh, they all just ran for the hills. All of their cavalry, all of the missile cav, uh, they, they ran. We've got a couple units of dark shards that are remaining to hide in the woods. I couldn't actually see these units, but I remember that they were there, so we sent our dervishes up. And they can just kind of ping pong around. The dark shards have almost nothing in terms of melee stats, so you can feel confident sitting even your very, very weak light cavalry in, and you can just bounce them between several units of dark shards, and they can fight all of them pretty much at the same time. Where normally you wouldn't want to do that because your units would just get overwhelmed by the amount of hits, uh, attacks hitting them. Dark shards, unfortunately for them, are, are really, really bad at a fight. I actually wouldn't mind seeing across the field for both the Elves and the Dark Elves, their normal archers being a bit more sturdy. So like, say these Kiss of Light Kossars here, they've got 28 30 melee attack and defense, and while they would be pretty rugged, would you think that the superhuman strength and speed of an Elf would be, should be better than, uh, than the Kiss of Light? Boarding the river now, though. It's nice and cold. Doggy boots before a battle. That's got to be morale lowering. Arrows away, though. These poor dark shards. Start showing them the true meaning of war. As you can see, our, our one unit of dervishes is ping-ponging and annihilating the archers. Those cavalry sabers pretty good at their jobs. These my horses look even better than all the others. Little painted ponies of doom. And the Dark Elves run for the hills. Looks like that was too much for them. Most of the units fleeing uh, did go ahead and trigger the army losses sooner than it would have. So we've got ourselves probably a pretty nasty fight ahead of us. We've got the entire cavalry left over. Now, though, we should claim this a win. And in a move, honestly, I didn't expect all of the Dark Elves turned and ran for the hills. Uh, now that wasn't great, so almost the entire army is still left, minus this one group of Dark Shores we managed to wipe out, and I didn't want to take down Hagreen fully, so we could just kind of uh, smack her on the side of the head one good time. They weren't going to recruit a fully healed Lord. Uh, we are going to take uh, the gold for them as well, and she's likely going to run for the hills, unfortunately. This does not break his Don't be surprised. We can all a little bit unfortunate, but we have gained ourselves a Berserker Sword for Kevin. And when you see this little gold uh, arrow here, it means it's automatically equipping. This blade constantly drips with the blood, or with blood, as if only just pulled from a corpse. Those that wield it scream with rage, demanding to feed the sword its next victim. Maybe we shouldn't give this sword to anyone in our armies. This seems like a very corruptive influence. A 5% more weapon strength and 15 charge bonus. Rackla Coven has ignored our trespassing warning. The audacity. And now we've got a new mission issued to grow our forces by 30 new units. It'll give us a war banner, which is very meh, and some spirit essence. Seven more leadership is what it is, but with, uh, with Kislev, you don't really have to worry about leadership. Because as soon as they do break, they go unbreakable for a good 30 seconds. Yeah, it's a whole 30 seconds, they go unbreakable. Okay, so for you, Kevin, 
They'd say we're going to go down the firing drills line first. Why, well, I forgot about that almost immediately, which is fantastic. Do we have any ancillaries that help out with control? In fact, we do, but that's with Elika, and that's just fine. Just Speaking of, woman. Room Maiden herself, 20 extra armor. Probably not a bad call, but let's go for Wildheart here, so that way anytime she is casting a spell, it'll be charging up our Winds of Magic. Alright, great. Not great as that green. Man, you managed to, how did you manage to do some healing? You lost that battle. Some shenanigans, I say. So the great news is we know nothing that's going on over in Marathi's territory, so we're actually going to send out this Hagwitch to go do a bit of scouting. So Marathi's still hanging out in the Grey Rock Point. She's upgrading a tier 2 now. Depending on what her army is, we should be able to move in here and deal with her, no problem. She's got an assassin, which would normally be kind of scary. He's got a crossbow, which, which is scary, but since we have both of our heroes on sleds, they can move around pretty quickly. Oh, bit like that. All right, Noctilus is coming back now. He's in a bit sneaky. So we'll have Stonky come on out in ambush stance once again. Hard shot. shot. And we'll have Arnheim chuck in. Uh, the Eerie Woods, probably a good call. That gives us the Akshina. We don't get the Earthen Den, then. Oh, and I want me some Frostworms. The Akshina are so good. They've lost a little bit of their strength now that they're no longer armor-piercing. They do have more range than your normal Kiss of the Light Archers. And they're sneaky. And have Snipe now for us. Where's their Snipe? Heat my okay, cool. As soon as we recruit them, they'll have it. That was a little bit concerning. Yeah, so let's check in the Akshina building, because it'll also give us some money. Oh, in terms of gold, she does not make nearly as much from the market caravans as, uh, as Kostaltan and Katarin. Let's check in those eerie woods, make a little bit of gold from them. From the travelers, I'm guessing, to get lost. Noble of the Oblast. All right, we're going to hunt down Hag Green one more time here. I am tempted to give them the Wolfheart Archers. Drugina, and then pass them off to uh, of Stankia once we've dealt with Hag Green. Let's do it. So we'll recruit Wolfhearts in. The best. Just go attack him like it has his. Kevin, you start. Follow me into the wild. And we'll have Gotrek move in. So she's got Shielda back there. My Scared of no one named Shielda. Let's get him. Let me auto resolve him. Oh, it'll give us a valiant defeat this time. Okay. Well, that's not such a big deal. We should have probably made a couple more trinkets before jumping into battle, but we'll go ahead and give the Whiff of Madness to this group of. It would spread around to some of the other Dark Riders, that'd be great. Go ahead and give this to... Are these guys different kind of Dark Riders? No, I'm just a... Just brain dead. Makes sense. Uh, since they're actually not the scariest, let's go ahead and give this to the Dark uh, Black Arc Corsairs, since they've got the best attack stats, and as well as a bonus for his infantry. Drop their charge bonus, give them a rampage, and we'll do what we can to rip Hagreen apart. Our squad of, this time, six versus her full army. Let's see what we can got. And the Dark Elves not giving us a second of time to rest. They are sending all of their skirmish missiles forward to see if they can't deal as much damage to Gotrek and Felix as they can. Or they have to clash with the uh, poor Hag Green here. We shall see how well they do. When the AI is good at utilizing their skirmish cavalry, they are an issue. 
extreme nuisance. If anyone who's played against the Dark Elves know that these guys can be a absolute problem. Firing their first volley, we're gonna try to dodge, but Felix gets hit by a few of those arrows there. He will regenerate, so it's not that big a deal, and it's mostly wasting shots for them, but we don't want to rack up too much damage, as Felix kind of has the leadership of a troll. It's a little bit higher, but it's very similar. Got the um, Corsair handbows doing the rampage boogie. They're just going to take off into the forest. They see a squirrel that he's murdering. There are dark elves absolutely everywhere. And this was the second battle that I was a little bit concerned about the sink for, just because of the uh, sheer mismatch in numbers. We'll see, won't we? Trying to chase them off, they turn and run for the hills. There's no way Gotrick or Felix can catch them, so it's best to just kind of cat and mouse dance around and try to waste crossbow bolts. And they're being obnoxious there, making sure they completely surround Gotrek. Very clever. And likely this is even on purpose, it's just that they've got skirmish mode on and that's the natural running away. That's what the riders are in now. Felix can get some damage going. Ooh, the unfortunately emaciated horses. With fangs. Demon horses. Now it's Gotrek and Felix in the woods versus all of the dark riders. Our reinforcements have arrived. We do need to be a little bit careful with them though because they are hard, quite outnumbered. And uh, all of these Dark Riders are, are very dangerous, even to normal Kislevites. That first charge hurts quite badly. Everyone's going to move up first, fire on this group of Skirmish Cav. Arrows away. They get a volley back, which is going to do a pretty fair bit of damage, but no Kossars actually do fall, so we win that initial volley pretty handily. We've got to make sure they don't come back, so we're going to set this unit to making sure, and everyone else will advance to assist Gotrek and Felix as the main body of Hagreen's forces move in. It's a horse party over here. All of the cavalry. As soon as our missiles can start firing, we are going to get a heap of damage, but the Dark Elves realize this and send some of their Dark Riders forward. Fortunately, Kevin got bogged down in his own units, so we, I was trying to send him out to try to catch them. It didn't quite work out like that, and we've got several Dark Riders swarming across the field now. That axe to work, my friend. Ready for battle. Ready for battle. Let's hope. Here come the Dark Riders. And this is when I had realized I'd forgotten that the Akshina have an ability that is a net, so the Wolf Hearts here have the Pack Trap, which will stop them from moving and give your enemy a bit of a penalty to their vigor, which is pretty fantastic. Last a full 10 seconds, which is more than enough time to wipe out a unit. But now they're getting charged, and we are in a little bit of a desperate straits here, as so they toss the nets up, whip their blades out, and get them stabbing. Dark Riders have a pretty dangerous charge, but after that, they're not nearly as, uh, as threatening. Several units, though, is these kids the lights. I guess I missed the order a little bit, and they were given a move order, and so they do meet the Reaper because of this. Try to do our best to focus fire. Well, Kevin runs around with that axe, all threatening. No one wants to fight him. Can't imagine why. Meanwhile, Gotrek and Felix are having the time of their lives. Let's see how many kills he's at. 66, and Felix is at 37. Slacking. Pick up those numbers. Those are rookie numbers. Corsairs are still doing the Rampage Boogie. Keep seeing random butterflies that need butchering for Kane. Finally decided to give up and just use his bow, because he was not going to catch anyone on foot. He should be able to drop about one or so riders a shot, which isn't super fast, but with help from the Kossars, it should make pretty short work of their large horses. Starved though they may be. Keeps dropping the Weissens wild form down on a few of her units, but Gotrek's a monster, he cares not for your wild form. He just kind of wiggles the axe around, doesn't even swing it like, a, like he means it. The 
bit too far away from Felix. I believe that they can be giving each other their leadership buffs. So they need to try to work their way towards one another through Blade. Just gonna hang out with the Wolfhards then. Let their crossbows do the work. Akshina or a mixture of uh, I think someone had an asked the in the comments. Akshina are kind of like the Cathayan soldiers where they are a uh, co-ed blend, co-ed army group, if you will. So there will be both male and female voice actors in. Absolutely love the Akshina. Definitely my favorite of the human is the White Forces. All of the new Kiss of Light Warriors are pretty awesome, too. These are nightmare horses. Look at them. I mean, they've braided, they've braided their manes up to try to make them look pretty, but man, that is, that is horrifying. Empiric horses, we free you. Still a lot of enemies left, though. We have only but begun to fight. And all of the enemies are ignoring our lord. It seems like they know the tactic of uh, the AI has learned. They are bogging down Gotrick and Felix in kind of expendable units and ignoring Kevin as much as they can. Charge the Dread Spears. We're going to do our best to uh, fall back because these are bleak swords. Arrows in the back will take down even an arrogant Druki. And while the wolf hearts turn around, they drop the nets a little bit slow, uh, but they should be able to rip right through this group. Actually, have pretty good melee stats, and the ones in the back will keep firing. I've lost one of our Kossar units. They're fleeing right off the field. They fought bravely. How many kills were to your name? All right, we're not going to talk about them. Only 30. That's weak. We're going to stern talking to by Mother Stonky later. They were probably using their feet like this guy. Ooh, power point mode. Let's get out of here. What is going on? All right, well, that was unfortunate. Back in. He didn't like us uh, talking about him trying to use his boot on the Dark Elves. I've actually used the resupply ability several times here on our Drugina. Two total on the Wolf Hearts here, giving them more and more ammunition. This is a fantastic ability. I think he's the first and only Kislevite uh, hero or lord that actually has the resupply trait, which is great. We'll be able to use this on the little Groms later on. Hey, cover! Our Drugina is not quite as good at Gotrek and Felix at, at staving off damage, especially when he's not trying to defend himself. Taking a little bit of wounds. This is a truly chaotic battle, and it does look like we're actually playing things out quite well. At least true to how they were on the actual battlefield. Well done, replay. Well, let me impress. Blanket of bolts for this group. Good grief, that was a lot of kills. Well, they did lose their majority armor piercing against light armored troops like uh, the uh, enemy dark shards and things. They absolutely obliterate them. I'm gonna go for the point blank shot into our Drugina. I wasn't expecting that at all. Pulls the axe out and starts asking questions. Spin swing. That was an animation straight out of uh, Dark Souls. Or Elden Ring is where I'm I'm pulling it from. The uh, the, the Leonin Misfriot. You're a real one if you know. That exact animation. That delay throws you off something fierce. Well, the enemy enemy wizard falls, and now we have a few more Druki to round up. Arrogance is unbegoving. And that one turned into a little bit more of a desperate fight than I would have liked, but we defeated Hagreen once more. Uh, this time taking down a lot more of her men with her. Would have been great to be able to do this with the previous battles and be able to fight them here. Uh, we'll go ahead and take... Salia provides is doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so we'll take the extra gold. Great. We when you arcane item, the scroll of blast. 
that a scroll has a bound spell that when read will unleash a sharp blast of arcane light as a magical missile that's very similar to just a uh, fireball and it'll just kind of fly on over and do some damage effective at close range good penetration good against armor uh, but requires a line of sight and i don't actually mind keeping that on gotrek for now he can kind of blast apart units before charging on in that'll work or at least creating a uh, a gap for his forces we'll turn the Drugina back around sink, dance and drink and we definitely need you to turn and get ready for the next fight we'll have Yotrek let them come go into sneaky mode we really are just going to kind of hold the line against the hags on that other side there this punk has got an additional point of course I'm thinking now's the time been a very very long life do we want to start saving in now or do we wait I think that's a really, really tough call. I think what we'll want to do is grab creatures of the land. We could go for firing drills, since we do have some Kossars and the Akshina. We're going to probably go for both in the end. First, though, let's go for creatures of the land to make all of our spiders a little bit stronger. But once we hit 10 skill points, I'm going to start saving. And that way we can grab uh, Bazorka's Wrath and one of these other really good ones immediately, like Mother's Rally for the extra uh, Hag Witches and the ability to unlock them anywhere we want, which is going to be how we are going to uh, try to make friends I with Kislev. I suppose these would be useful. Uh, hopefully. We will go ahead and create another whiff of madness there. Fools leading you into battle against me. Champion of the mother. Exactly. You better listen to your hearts. Got a whole bunch to talk about. I will grab the additional point into firing drills here for Kevin. And I we'll have him. I tribute. Want to sit and replenish? It's going to take how many turns? Just five, that's actually not bad. 118 for more Kossars, so I think we just sit and wait. We'll be building up our economy little by little as we start making more friends with the uh, High Elves here. And the Tree Elves, too. Born. I'm waiting. Yeah, no other. I'm we haven't Carolyn. met any of the other Ulthawani Elves. We need to get some of our heroes out to uh, exploring. Alika, you keep checking what's going on over here in the Petrified Forest. As soon as Marathi moves up through the Petrified, we can come on out of the Moon Shard and hopefully attack Grey Rock Point with Estankia herself. I just go after one of their smaller settlements and then force uh, force Marathi to fight us directly. All right, that's it for this turn, though. All right, technology researched. I'm dedicated purely to rest, but also knowledge of healing herbs and the methods needed to extract the best from them to a casualty survival. We've got a new mission issued for the Motherland to capture and occupy Hag Hall. Shall it be? I'm thinking if we just let Kevin Bruce recruit up a little bit more here, ready. this squad should have no trouble what? dealing with Hag Hall. We'll see how strong their forces are. Noctilus is just kind of wiggling around over here. Can we reach out and uh, get him? Oh, oh we can. He's in March day. stance too. A senseless request. I mean, he, okay, he's up to a 20 stack, so this could go really bad for us. But if we can knock out Noctilus here, that will allow whoever else is at war with him to kind of sail on down and then bully the Galleon's graveyard, or take whatever other gains he might have already grabbed. Oh, we've got to go for it, don't we? Our army's not the scariest, but we should outrange... No, we shouldn't, should we? It's going to be an island battle, too. Let's get him. Well, you know what? Before we before we go all the way to him, let's make sure we get the last, last whiff of madness here. We're probably going to need quite a few of those. Drop one on Noctilus and probably his other heroes. Glorious. Okay, so he has a bloated corpse that we can just kind of deal with by sending a stock out to give it a, a hug. We want a Griffin banner on a Stonkia, or we could just Griffin banner on uh, the big incarnate, who is already going to have a roar to a lower speed or a leadership by eight. So a, a nice negative 12 to the leadership. All right, let's lift a whiff of madness on Noctilus and his hero. And then I say we probably drop one on the Necrofex Colossus as well. And that'll pretty well eliminate his army. We don't quite outrange the gun mob there, so we're going to want to make sure. We are ambushing them either from the woods or a position that they have to be firing. 
we will find the best place to ambush them from once we hit the battlefield. Noctilus versus Astonkia. Let it begin. Old Noctilus thought he'd be safe on the waters from Mama Stanky. He was wrong. And as he and, uh, what's your pirate's name here? And McMaggot do the, uh, the whole rampage jiggy? They're gonna keep dancing around and doing nothing for a while, which is great. We'll go ahead and speed this along while Stankia screams towards their front line. they have also got a rampaging Necrofex, so if we can get its attention, it'll start coming on across the field towards Stankia quite quickly. Looks like they have decided to send, well, they just kind of run into each other like buffoons. We've got a Three Stooges stuff going on. We have Stankia versus some undead bats. I don't know about you boys, but I think the undead, undead bats are a bit of a disadvantage. Male wolves charge in. Our spirits start doing their thing. Also drop the cool yas down for the lovely heals. And yeah, the bats are disintegrating away to nothing. Our battle strategy is a pretty simple one. I've got Elberdeers set up all across the front here uh, with a couple of Kisselites behind them. And a few more hiding in the woods with the spiders and the thing in the woods. Uh, the, uh, I guess, elemental incarnate, which can actually hide in trees because he is terrifying. That's the entire reason. We've got the small spiders and the things in the woods over on this side. The plan is to move in and eliminate the gun white once the gun, all of the gun mobs, once they have uh, closed the gap. Got our slowdown spell dropping for kiss. It looks amazing, doesn't it? It throws up the spooky forest. Now we really need a lore about the Lauren. Necrofex is starting to go down already, but it's not over yet. Got some nasty shots as he uh, blasts Mother Estonkia a good one. Four cannonballs at once. That's always going to be a scary proposition. Prone crossbows are a little bit confused. They're firing on the normal gun mob. And Estonkia takes another cannon shot. We've got dire or scurvy dogs, is what they're called, rushing across the field. Crashing into our warriors. I wanted to see the death animation for this big beastie, though. Like, one more volley should be enough. You guys are so loud. I'm gonna have to dial back the volume a little bit further. Let's take it back to about here. Bolts screaming in. Those dire wolves lasted in no time at all. They got swarmed by the armor piercing spiders. Uh, and the armor piercing Gizzlelite Warriors worked out great. Skonky is now taunting the whole army on the Bale Wolves. Blasting that group of bits. She takes a single volley. You gotta be very careful with uh, any gunpowder units against your chariots. Very, very fast to go down. Another hidden forest breaking up out of the ground. And now of our, all of our Cossars in the woods can start firing away into the enemy lines as well. Most of their targets are going to be the enemy gun mob. We want to trade with them as fast as we can. All the elemental incarnate has come on through to deal with the combined hero and lord gun a situation. Should absolutely flatten the gunnery white noctilus will be a little bit more dangerous but only a little. Look at that damage. We've got a Stonky coming on over just to be a nuisance and charge in on anyone who needs it. I guess the Light Warrior is getting blended apart by the Depth Guard at the center. That was a bad time. You didn't want to be here. Maybe they got taken out to the very minute. Yes, that's going to be all of them. That's no good at all. Dual axes are terrifying. These warriors are doing a bit better for themselves. They're trying to uh, cycle charge. Interesting strategy. We needed to move our own missile troops over just a little bit. We got the things in the woods moving up to clobber. The depth throw, that actually went very quick. I expected we'd be able to get over here and actually watch this. Spiders plus 
things in the woods equals uh, the death of the Death Guard. And like that, Noctilus falls. His last soldier is trying to chase Mother Astonkia. She will indeed get you. And a fantastic win under our belt. Noctilus has been knocked out, and hopefully, he will not be showing his face anytime soon. We did have to sacrifice one of our Kiss the Light warriors there. I did not react in time with the things in the woods and the giant spiders, and these uh, depth guards just ripped right through them like they didn't even exist. Uh, so we'll have to recruit up another unit of them, but that's no big deal. We lost 176 total, mostly just being that one unit. Uh, we will go ahead and pardon the captives. They were in March stance. They're all going to be wiped out anyway. We'll just take the extra 1,100 gold. Exactly. We're still sending them to the briny deeps. We've got Dreadfleet down. Back to the Galleon's Graveyard with you. Noctilus, it's all you're good for. We've got extra leadership when fighting against Vampire Coast and when fighting against at sea. All right, well, that's not a great defeat rate. But now we've got the ROR unit, the Boydenov's Brawlers, which is a Streltsy unit with a more of a shotgun style attack instead of the normal, much less range, but a lot more damage. We also apparently got a new trinket there. Fantastic. Oh yeah, we didn't actually fight any undead when we were uh, invading that one island. Awesome. So now we've got the Rotting Clavicle which will either give us more range when used as a blessing or drop the enemy's range when used as a curse. Uh, the power of an item can be derived from its creator, arcane strength, origin, or unsurpassed stench. Uh, this will now unlock the Fragmenti curse, which is by far one of the strongest. Uh, this will just basically drop someone's health very slowly down to 25%, no matter what they have, uh, which is... As you can expect, very, very strong, so just no matter what, they will have 25% health, and you can kind of just whittle them down from there. Uh, the Agony Succession, I think, is even stronger because it doesn't have a limit, so it won't stop once they hit 25%, where this one will. Uh, but Fragmenti is still great, and we're going to go ahead and grab it anyway. Uh, this version of it is going to drop their range by 15% and give them a heap more. They're going to make them very, very tired. Like a summer glacier, you crumble from the inside. Crumble. And we have not claimed back Mother any of the Astankia. territory that has any corruptions. We won't worry about any of that. We'll have a Astankia going to full speed. Uh, are we going to attrition no matter what? Because this region is experiencing a storm. All right, since we have no choice, we have no choice. We'll just move back to Arnheim. The great if Noctilus defeat trait uh, made it so you didn't take storm attrition. Um, for the good mother, we are up to rank 10, so let's go ahead and start saving those skill points. No matter how difficult it's going to be for us. Are you able to steal technology? Ooh, she is. I don't want to. What are we going to go for our next technology, though? We do want to be moving through the Tales from the Woods. So let's go ahead and grab Fighting Shadows to give all of our critters more armor, and then some bonus V infantry for those cave bat units, which will give us a, a reason to actually recruit them. And then from there, I think we'll grab the Ice Sculpting, which will allow us to get some Frost Maiden heroes. And even though it doesn't necessarily make sense the that a Stonky would have them, uh, we'll, we'll start using them for our advantage here. Yeah, let's go ahead and steal some back. Yoink, and we succeed. Not that that's going to really matter for the Fighting Shadows, it's only take one turn regardless. And that's going to make Varathi good and angry at us. At your peril. Sweet business. Alright, so we've got 258 Cruiser. coming in. I think it's fine for us to be a bit zealous with our units. For the glory and of Kislev. Start recruiting up. We'll have Gotrek stay in that ambush stance. We're going to come on out. Follow me into the wild. Into encamp, or can we just reach Hag Hall here either way? Oh, we can reach either way, so let's just go ahead and stay. Love we'll Gotrek, be the scout. Off we go. Still have shield to deal with up here. Foolishness. Ruzina, ready. You guys fall on back. We'll have the Druzina keep rooting in. A few more troops. I'd say we actually need some Kislevite warriors, so we'll grab one. Two of you, we do have 50 more income, so that'll be that'll be just fine. 
all the more reason for him to be going down his blue line to drop that upkeep too. Got it right. We've met a Lyrian. There, are they still at Can war with? Assistance? Why are they fighting Tyrannoc? Civil war amongst the elves. Defender of the Phoenix Throne. We could just start trading with Tyrion or Illyrian. Illyrian looks to be the one that is going to survive. I bet they settle their differences. So let's go ahead and just grab a trade agreement. Welcome, traveler. And that'll start what our progression along with Ethane as well. If you wish. We're getting Tyrion on side. Tyrion and Alariel both. Lady, yes. All right, that's a little bit more income from trading, which is great. If things get too spicy, we can just chuck in the Void and Oz brawlers. We've got a lot of income sitting in the background here, so wouldn't be too big of a deal. Skip through our unassigned skill points, and that'll be our turn. All right, looks like a fairly uneventful in turn, and many monsters take the shape of common animals, but reveal their forms of mist and shadow just as the axe falls. Be really cool if this. Uh, ooh, we got some jets flying overhead. I'll mutiny right back. All right, the jets are gone, but my favorite neighbors have rolled up in their busted car. But time waits for no one. We're just gonna power on through. If you hear any weird uh, engine sounds, I don't know what else to call it. Uh, that is going to be their strange muffler. It's extra noisy on purpose. You know the type. Uh, the moon shard. An unnatural aggression takes hold of the populace. A seething frustration that explodes at the slightest provocation. Even the most placid soul becomes as quick to anger as a rabid dog. Soon enough, the fighting begins. The streets are littered with the dazed and beaten, and the gutters run red with blood. We've been invaded by Gandhi from Civ. Uh, the Age of Rage. Uh, so extra corn corruption in the moon shard. I think that shouldn't be too big of a deal. We've got a new mission issued now. We have to win 10 battles with any hero embedded. We have four wins currently. Resentment grows. Should be no big deal. Resentment grows. You boys will deal with it. Something I'm not super thrilled about, though, that is they are sitting here building up a large force Commander of the surgery. to fight Kevin. Uh, we're going to give him the Boydenov's Brawlers because these Threltsy seem like they are much more uh, outdoorsy types. Yeah, they've got... Does it say how many missiles at, they shoot at once? Oh, just one, really. It just has much less range. It looks like these boys are able to throw down pretty aggressively in combat, which is good. Well, I could recruit them, or I could just get a couple more archers, which I think is going to be the better call. Only the bravest I just blanket are them in arrows. Akshina, we can get more of, but they're going to be quite expensive. Tough call, tough call. I want to stonk his army to be all maxed out, so let's. Before doing anything else with everyone, any of our other units, come on down to the moon shard here. Get the gangplank for me. Get the gangplank for me. Call me Maybe she needs a little witch. bit more of a witchy uh, boat, but I bet that's that's probably pretty complicated to give her a specific unit. Uh, let's go Akshina uh, Ambusher, so we have two of them. I'd love to have a total of four. And I want four of the warriors, too, so let's go ahead and combine up all of these Kossars. Whoop. Magic is Get rid of this unit. Way. Go ahead and give us one more of the normal warriors. That's going to up us by uh, 352. Now let's go ahead and just start getting rid of a few more Kossar units. Not every soldier is useful. Agreed. Let's get the Akshina first. I want four Akshina total. And then we will just drop back as many Kossars as we need. Uh, just because they won't be able to see the, the Akshina. They've got Snipe now, so they are super, super safe. Whereas the Kossars are not. So in fact, I'm actually going to go ahead and get rid of all of them so we don't have to pay their upkeep anymore. Oh, this out a little you. No, they're fine. The they're back out to the fields. Don't smack off the Mustang, ya. We'll throw in the Timber Mill here. Forest of Arnheim. Probably more growth. So let's go Farmstead for a bit of income as well. Sweet business. We are disrespected. We are disrespected. No, you're not. You're being dramatic. Oh, it's like that. Yeah, and since we are starting to build up an army, let's go ahead and switch over to the relief columns. To help us out with that next turn, we can get in all of our warriors and other Akshina that I want, and then we can move on from there. 
Hagwitch. Uh, next bit of technology. Let's go ahead and snag charms above the door. We'll get all of these as we're here. And then we'll likely circle back around to... Well, the Hooked Axe Blades actually gives the normal warriors more melee defense. They've already got 40, so 44 is pretty hefty. And we'll come back around to ice sculpting. The land, the tales, the Let's bring you back over with Estonkia, because there's no reason to keep yoinking stuff against. away. We know Marathi's hiding here. In fact, let's just kind of stay in friendly territory the to keep growth good. Me. There we go. And then we'll kind of keep an eye on Marathi from there. Hag I think it current Estonkia can handle Marathi, but we'll we'll see. Great Grumney's beard! Great Grumney's beard! I'm trying to figure out how we can lure this army out. We could have Gertrek go up and do some raiding. And then have the other army behind them. I think we just have to keep trying to Champion pretend we're not here. Same thing with you, Kevin. So let's have you sneak out. I lead, you in, follow. Uh, ambush this dance. mission requires guile. Out of my way! Try to bring everyone. Ooh, no, 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 wrong. Contract bring everyone Jersey. together. That way, they can actually reinforce. Defender of Kislev. Here we go. Go, Trek and Kevin. Sneaky special forces. All right. And before I give this the end turn, this will be where we save for this episode. I am out of time for today. Thank you all so much for stopping by today's Mother of Stonky episode. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like for the like god and a sub with the sub thumb. I'll see you in the next one.